Beating Alliance on hero mode is frustrating to say the least, and here's why. Okay, you get the point. Hero mode is really difficult. Oh, and to make matters even worse, I'm free to play. Dang it. Well, there's only one way for me to beat this game mode. By using some questionable strategies. For example, using a one-shot team with only one DPS cookie. Ascending frost flop, very cursed. Using cookies that used to be bad, such as Linzer and Space Donut. Along with a few other illegal practices. And it all started when I had a conversation with this guy. Anonymous coders are free to play who completed hero mode. And I was like, hey, I wanna be like him. I asked him for help and he gave me a video. I also linked it in the description. And it showed me some teams I could use to beat hero mode. Starting with this one right here. It's supposed to be a one shot team. Space Donut, Rebel, Rockstar, and Mango are the supports. And Frost Shop's the main DPS. We're supposed to use this on wave 1. And at first I thought there's no way this team could work. Space Donut has been kicked out of the meta for a long time. And it's impossible for Frost Shop to one shot a wave but I guess she can. I thought maybe I just got lucky on wave 1. So she probably can't one shot wave 2 right? Okay, I guess this team's meta. I'll show you how to build it then. Everyone needs damage resist and cooldown subset. Space Donut has 5 chocolate. Rebel has 5 chocolate. Rockstar has 5 apple. Mango's 5 chocolate. And Frost Flop's 5 raspberry. Treasures are the scroll watch and whistle. You also may be wondering how I ascended Frost Flop. Well, for the past 3 years I've been collecting her soul stones. I got her from the gacha a few times. And I saved a ton of soul stone chests for her. 3 years is plenty of time to ascend a legendary. Alright, here comes the mini bosses. There's no way Frost Frostlop's gonna one-shot these guys, right? Right? Okay, never mind. Killing the enemies in one skill rotation leads to a faster clear time. So that's why I'm gonna use this team a lot. However, wave 6 is a little more difficult. There's this one chest piece enemy right here. It dashes into your team and avoids a lot of the debuffs. So it's kinda hard to kill it in one skill rotation. Sometimes I'm able to do it, but for this run I didn't, so dang it. Okay, for wave 7 it's really easy. But you have to be mentally prepared for wave 8. This is where hero mode truly begins. This is the sandworm boss where a lot of people get stuck. The worm has 130 million HP, it does insane amounts of damage, and it eats your frontliners. This causes them to not be able to use their skill. To beat this boss, we're gonna have to use an illegal cookie. Linzer, who used to be really bad, until she got popular in the skirmish raid event. Anyways, Frost Pop's not good against the worm boss, so we need to use a creme brulee team instead. Creme brulee's the best boss killer, Yeti, Financier, and Cream Puff will heal the team, and Linzer makes the boss a lot weaker. However, there are some extra steps I took to make this work. The moment I completed wave 7, I swapped to the creme Blade team. I also use cream puff skill as soon as possible. Finally, I use yeti skill before the boss text appears. So now we're ready to fight the worm. I'll show you how to build a creme brulee team now. Yeti has 5 chocolate, Financier has 5 almond, Linzer has 5 almond and high attack speed, Brulee has 5 raspberry and high attack speed, and Cream Puff has uh... Wait a second, what is this? Well, that's my illegal topping set. Most people should use 5 apple jellies, but my candy's level 30 so I don't need that. I already have enough crit so I gave her some almonds. For the treasures, give the whistle buff to creme brulee and cream puff, use the watch, and give the rope buff to creme brulee and Linzer. Okay, so before wave 9 began, I tried to heal my cookies, and then I swap back to the Frost Flop team from earlier. As expected, Frost Flop just kills everyone. We're gonna be using Frost Flop for a while, so I might as well do a little montage, right?
And we have to stop the montage. Wave 12 is quite difficult. It contains two strong mini bosses, a really tanky vampire cookie, a goblin sniper in the back, and three minions protecting them. First, we have to kill the minions with frost flop. Then Brulee needs to kill vampire and the goblin. Well, that's a lot easier said than done. The goblin sniper in the back does a lot of damage. To make matters even worse, that sandworm from wave 8 weakened our Brulee team. All I can do is hope for the best, so here we go. You may have noticed that sometimes I use 1.5 speed. It's actually better to use 1.0 speed because there's less room for human error, but I'm kind of forced to use it, and here's why. Whenever I finish an alliance run too slowly in real life, my game times out and disconnects from the server. This could be because I'm using an emulator on a computer, and it gets a bit unstable with Cookie Run Kingdom. But basically, once this notification appears, I can't get past it. I have to close and reopen the game. However, it kicks me out of alliance and sets me back a few levels. For example, if I crash after completing wave 20, I only get wave 16 rewards. My only solution to this is to play the game at 1.5 speed. This allows me to play the game faster in real life, and this reduces the chances of me disconnecting or timing out from the server. Okay, why the heck am I even talking about this? But now we're at wave 16. For the mini bosses, we have Strawberry and Strawberry Crepe. They're also protected by a few cake hounds. First, we need to one-shot all of them with Frost Flop, and she needs to kill Strawberry Crepe at the same time. Afterwards, Brulee needs to kill Strawberry. If we don't kill Strawberry Crepe right away, things get really ugly. They start summoning a bunch of enemies, and Crumble is not able to focus on Strawberry Cookie. Okay, I'm pretty prepared for this. Hopefully, I can beat this stage, so here we go. On the final four waves now, and it's about time to tell you what my other three teams do. They all have one tank and four DPS cookies, but they're all backup teams. They don't actually do that much and are pretty useless. You can probably beat Alliance with only two teams, so uh, yeah. Well, let's finish the final waves. It's time for another montage. So it all comes down to this. I have to defeat this goblin tower. I'll use the crumble A team and hopefully I don't get disconnected from the server. Oh yes, I finally won, and that's how I became Grandmaster 1 inside the Alliance. But there's one other thing I haven't told you about yet. In the previous season, Alliance on Hero Mode was a lot more difficult, and I kinda beat it. I just didn't have enough time to make a video, so uh, yeah. Now you should subscribe cause I'm poor. Alright, see ya.